Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Dr. Colin Zhu, and thank you so much for being here with us. This is the Thrive Bites podcast, and welcome to season five. Here we talk about three things, plant-powered living, enhancing emotional resilience, and creating a thriving mindset. And I interview the most passionate guests here, ranging from physicians to coaches to dietitians to entrepreneurs. And my hope is to give you really informative and high-valued conversations. So please Follow us here on YouTube, Spotify, Apple, and wherever you hear your podcasts. Come on in, and I can't wait to see you inside. All right, guys, and welcome to Thrive Bites. I'm so glad that you you can be here with us Uh, for this episode. I am joined by Dr. Jeffrey Pierce and Dr. Michael Clapper, and these are fabulous individuals, uh, gifted uh, physicians that I team up with um, on plant-based telehealth, and we talk about all things um, osteoporosis uh, prevention in terms of, you know, going deeper into the physiology, you know, how does it even arrive, um, you know, from early disease to osteopenia to osteoporosis. We talk about how it relates uh, to food and nutrition, how it relates to overall lifestyle and fitness and exercise, and what are the things to talk about? We talk about, you know, misconceptions. Exceptions. And uh, these two individuals not only talk about it, but they also walk their walk. And, you know, they also demonstrate um, how they incorporate it into their lifestyle. So you definitely don't want to miss this. And, uh, you know, please join us and stay tuned. Okay, guys. Well, welcome to another episode of Thrive Bites. I'm your host, Dr. Colin Zhu, and thank you so much for being here with us. You could have been anywhere in the world, and I am super, super, super stoked that you decided to spend a few moments with us today. And I have a awesome, awesome uh, podcast session um, for you guys. I am joined by the wonderful gentleman, Dr. Gentlemen's, <laughs> Dr. Michael Clapper and Dr. Jeffrey Pierce. Um, a little bit about Dr. Uh, Clapper. I'm not going to take the whole episode because it's going to take the whole episode to kind of recite <laughs> Dr. Clapper's resume. But um, taking a uh, quote unquote verbatim um, um, from his uh, quote is proper nutrition through a whole food plant based diet and balanced lifestyle are essential for health and many cases can make the difference between healing an illness and merely treating its uh, symptoms. And Dr. Michael Clapper um, is a gifted uh, clinician, internationally recognized teacher and sought after speaker on diet and health. In addition to his clinical practice and private consultations with his patients, he is a passionate and devoted educator of physicians and other healthcare professionals about the importance of nutrition and clinical practice in integrative medicine. He's the author of Vegan Nutrition, Pure and Simple, uh, which is no longer in print. Um, However, he has produced numerous health videos, webinars, and dozens of articles of both scientific journals and popular press. And as a source of inspiration, advocating plant-based diets and the end of animal cruelty worldwide, Dr. Clapper has contributed to making two uh, PBS uh, television uh, programs, Food for Thought, and awarding, uh, award-winning movie, Die for a New America, based on the same book. Um, Dr. Clapper teaches that health comes from a healthy living, and he is dedicated uh, to the healing and flourishing of all living beings on our planet. I love it. Uh, Dr. Jeffrey Pierce um, His quote is, with the right information and motivation, people can get to the root cause of their illness and heal themselves. Dr. Pierce is a dual board board certification in family medicine and lifestyle medicine, and he is passionate about using a whole food, plant-based diet, and other lifestyle medicine uh, modalities to help uh, people get healthier, get off of medications, and live longer, fuller lives. I love that. Um, His goal is to meet his patients where they're at and work with them at their pace to improve their health one day at a time. And uh, what's cool about him is that he does a lot of um, other work um, outside of America. Um, and he's worked uh, extensively um, extensively around the globe, including El Salvador, Honduras, Peru, the Philippines, um, and many uh, countries, um, just uh, you know, teaching residents and other medical clinics. So without further ado, please welcome. <laughs> Hello, gentlemen. Hello. Hey there, Colin. <laughs> Good to see you. Good to see you guys too. Thank you so, so much for being here with us on the show. Thank you again for coming back. We had the whole gang originally, and uh, I'm really glad for you guys, uh, us gentlemen, to be here. (laughs) Our pleasure. Our pleasure. 
So osteoporosis prevention is the heart of this episode. And, uh, you know, we just want to get straight into it. I know that you guys, you know, came with presentations and demos. And, um, you know, Dr. Clapper, let's, uh, you know, start off uh, with you. All right, let's start. Okay, um, this is going to be about a 15, 20 minute uh, cruise through bone uh, function. Uh, and if the material goes by fast, you can always go to my website, drclapper.com. Uh, this is largely all in my video called Healthy Bones uh, Free for the Viewing. Um, as far as the bones keeping their strength, people often overlook the fact that bones are alive. We think they're these dead, many people think they're these dead rods of chalky calcium. Uh, but actually, they have a very rich blood supply. They have a nerve supply. They are vital, vital structures, uh, and they are constantly changing, and we constantly have to meet their needs for nourishment, which is the same as, uh, as the structures throughout the body. Uh, in the structures of the bone, in the little struts and interstices and buttresses of the bone, there are hundreds of millions of cells living there that keep the bone healthy, there are two types of bone cells. One are called osteoblasts, and they build new bone. And then there's the osteoclasts, and they break down old bone. Uh, you might say, why do you have cells that break down bone? Well, life is a contact sport, and every time you bang your shin on the coffee table or hit your elbow on the desk there, little micro cracks can appear in the bone. And it's important that these micro cracks get fixed because just like a crack in your car windshield, uh, the crack will extend and the bone integrity is lost. So as soon as there's one of these little cracks, the osteoclasts come by with their enzymes and they dissolve old bone, they get out of the way, and then the osteoblasts come in with their new bone and they lay down a healthy new bone structure. Here you see it under the microscope. Uh, here is an osteoclast. He's just uh, melted away some old cracked bone. He's leaving the scene. Uh, and the osteoblast bone building cells are going to come in and fill this in with new bone. This phenomenon is called remodeling. It's happening 24-7 in your in your all bones of your body. We want to make sure this process uh, continues in a healthy, vigorous manner. Now, what makes the osteoblast lay down new bone? Using your bone, uh, especially against gravity. Every time you carry a weight on your shoulder or lift something up uh, from, with your leg bones, etc. Now, there's a slight mm, torquing mm, distortion of the bones. There's a little bit of bending forces applied. And these bending forces stimulate the osteoblast uh, to spin out new bone. In the same way you use your muscles and the muscle cells, uh, like the lady in the center, she's using her muscles. Uh, and the muscle cells are talking to each other saying, hey, she's using us. Let's get the muscle cells stronger. Well, your bones react the same way. The more you use the bones, the stronger they get. And uh, we don't have to deal with the science here, but a couple of Proteins get released that make the bone cells uh, pull calcium to them uh, and uh, lay down healthy new bone. It's really a remarkable, remarkable system. And this was characterized by Dr. Julius Wolf back in the late 1800s, uh, who noted that the bones of the, the blacksmith in town, this was in the 1800s, um, when he, if he was uh, examined or God forbid, killed in an accident and an autopsy was done, it was clear that the bones in the arm that he held his big hammer were bigger, stronger, denser bones than the arm that he did not hold the hammer in. And it was very evident that the more you use the bones, the stronger they get. Same thing with professional tennis players. The bone density of in the arm uh, that they serve with uh, is significantly greater than their non-serving arm. This is Wolf's Law. Bone in a healthy person or animal will adapt to the loads under which it is placed. Use it or lose it. The more you use the bones, the stronger they get. Here you see Wolf's Law at work. If you asked a structural engineer to uh, tell us the lines of force that go down your hip bone when you stand on them, the engineer would draw these lines. Well, looky here. Uh, Wolf's Law says the osteoblasts will line up right along those lines of force, and indeed they do. And here's Wolf's Law at work. Isn't this beautiful? When I saw this in the physiology book, I, I put, the, put the book down and I applauded. It was It's just so elegant and beautiful. And it's at work for us 24-7. The more you use your bones, the stronger they get. 
Now, we used to live really physical lives. Osteoporosis was not a an real issue back in the 16, 17, 1800s. We were spent all day gathering firewood, uh, plowing the fields, uh, using heavy tools, carrying big boxes of vegetables. And our bones stayed strong all the way through our entire lives. Uh, so osteoporosis was a relative rare event. But welcome to the 21st century uh, with all our modern uh, conveniences, we spend our days sitting. We sit when we uh, when we eat, we sit when we travel, we sit when we work, we sit when we uh, take a break, uh, we sit when we party, we sit when we watch TV, we sit, we sit, we sit. <clears throat> and it's comfortable, but the price we pay uh, is that without consistent weight-bearing exercise, those osteoclasts that break down bone, they're going to dissolve old bone faster than the osteoblasts are laying down new bone. Uh, and as a result of a sedentary lifestyle, bone substance starts to disappear. Normally under the microscope, it should, the bone matrix should look something like this. But if the osteoblasts keep nibbling away, uh, because the oste if the osteoclasts keep nibbling away, uh, the osteoblast won't be stimulated to lay down new bone, and soon bone matrix is actually lost. This is osteoporosis. It is not essentially a calcium deficiency. Okay, we need to understand it's not what you're looking at, and taking calcium pills or drinking the milk of a cow is not going to magically uh, make this bone matrix come back. There's only one thing that will make those uh, that bone tissue come back, and that is using it and stimulating the osteoblasts that are still there. But it's magical thinking to take, it's thinking that if I just take 20 calcium pills every morning, I'll have strong bones. No, you won't. You'll have calcified arteries and calcified tendons and calcified bursa in your joints, uh, but you won't have stronger bones for it. So, tenant number one, osteoporosis is not primarily a calcium deficiency. You need some calcium. But that's not the nature of the disease. It's largely disuse atrophy of the bones. It's made worse by insufficient deficiency, insufficient, uh, insufficient amounts of, yes, calcium, but also vitamins and other minerals. Uh, as we get older and women lose their estrogens and guys lose their testosterone, yes, that will uh, uh, result in uh, less uh, bone density. And then we do things, we'll be talking about it, that make our bones dissolve even more quickly, too much salt, too much sugar. We'll talk about those. But this is the underlying mechanism of uh, osteoporosis. It's not a calcium deficiency per se. So number one main cause of sedentary lifestyle. Number two, as I mentioned, lack of essential nutrients. Bones are alive. They require the same nutrients that your skin, your muscles, your nerves, your brain, they all require vitamin D. Vitamin K2, these are two especially important vitamins for uh, bone health. But again, you know, don't overdose on them, but you want to make sure we'll talk about getting enough of these two vitamins. But you need some vitamin B6, vitamin C, folate, etc. You need minerals. Yes, you need calcium, but you also need boron and copper, magnesium, manganese. Uh, these are earth minerals. They're in the green vegetables. They're in the root vegetables. They're in the fruits. Uh, uh, all the more reason why you need a very uh, high uh, uh, whole food plant-based diet. And you need a little dash of essential fatty acids and uh, protein in, in legumes, beans, peas, chickpeas, lentils. Uh, and those also are part of a healthy whole food plant-based diet. So nourish your bones. It's not a matter of just taking calcium pills or drinking milk. Uh, <clears throat> And finally, there's those calcium thieves that I mentioned. Uh, sorry. Um, oh, uh, this food is not bone healthy, to say the least. This is what most Westerners uh, uh, flow through their bones. And you can tell they're not going to be supplying the vitamins and minerals and calcium and trace minerals, etc., uh, that uh, healthy bones require. No wonder we are... Uh, uh, saddled with so many people with, uh, or so many people are saddled with low bone density from osteoporosis. A whole food plant-based diet will supply enough protein, vitamins, minerals, etc. Uh, again, gorillas eating 
leaves and fruit all day uh, have strong bones all the way through their lives without drinking the milk of a cow or uh, or uh, taking calcium tablets. So does every elephant, every buffalo, every giraffe, all these massive uh, planting creatures uh, build and maintain strong bones on uh, the nutrients found in a whole food plant-based diet. Um, here's those calcium thieves that make the bone matrix dissolve even more aggressively. Too much salt in the diet. We eat lots of salt in the meats and the chips, etc. Um, acids in the diet. Uh, meats have lots of sulfates and phosphates. Uh, that's an acid load that can help the bones dissolve. Uh, dairy products, as I'll show you, uh, actually contribute to can contribute to bone loss because uh, the dairy protein leaves an acid residue. Refined grains, white white flour, white sugar products spawn organic acids. Cola drinks have phosphoric acid. That's what gives cola the bite on your tongue there. Uh, cigarette smoke, the nicotine makes the blood vessels to the bone constrict and, de and uh, minimizes uh, blood flow through the bone tissue. When people put themselves under lots of extra stress, their adrenal glands put out cortisol and high cortisol levels that help the bone matrix uh, dissolve. Uh, people who t uh, take the long-term acid blockers, the Prevacid and, Prevacid and other uh, acid blockers, well, you need that acid to absorb calcium. And so they set themselves up for a functional calcium deficiency from their acid blockers. And finally, the folks taking uh, uh, who are on corticosteroids, say for their asthma or autoimmune disease, but they're taking more than they need. The same thing with the folks taking thyroid hormone. Too much steroid, too much thyroid hormone can also um, uh, weaken your bones. So you want to make sure that you're not inflicting these additional uh, calcium uh, thieves stresses upon your uh, upon your bone matrix there. So how do you test for it? How do you know? Well, there's some bone and urine tests that you can do. Uh, if you're, the bones are dissolving, then the, the fragments of bone protein, the telopeptide, shows up in the urine. So you do a 24-hour urine test for bone protein. And also, while you're collecting the urine for 24 hours, see how much calcium is being lost. You also want to check to make sure you don't have any problem with too much thyroid or parathyroid hormone. They also can, uh, uh, can uh, make your bone matrix dissolve. Hey guys, if you are interested in having a consultation with me and actually see me one-on-one, -on -one, um, the Chef Doc Lifestyle Medicine uh, practice has partnered with Plant-Based Telehealth and uh, we offer uh, lifestyle medicine consultations. So you'll be able to see me one-on-one -on -one and um, I can go over your health history and seeing what we can do to fill in the gaps. Uh, we can talk about your physical health, anything from food to lifestyle to diet to setting up your kitchen to cooking preparation to grocery shopping to your mental health. Um, I think it's important that we build our emotional resilience to talking about your sleep and how to stay hydrated and what are the best uh, medicines if necessary, what are the best supplementations if necessary. And we do all this in a very concise manner and it's a conversation. I take the time out to listen. I take the time out to really understand you from the ground up and to look at all aspects um, of your physical, emotional, and mental health. And um, please, you know, uh, drop me a line, schedule an appointment if you want to see me one-on-one. -on -one. And um, I am very, very looking forward to learning more about you. And again, thank you so much for visiting uh, here uh, at The Chef Doc. You can do a bone density study, a, a DEXA scan. Lots of people get these. Uh, I'll talk a bit about them. They're, they may or may not be helpful uh, to people. I'll tell you why in a minute. But let's just make it. Let me just cut to the chase here. You can you can really frighten yourself and box yourself with these numbers. But um, if you are a man or woman leading a generally sedentary lifestyle, assume that your bone density could use some help, uh, that, that, that all your hours at the computer and in the car or in the truck or whatever, uh, your bone matrix has been dissipating. Uh, and especially if you are a petite woman, you guys ask so little of your skeleton as you walk that if you are a petite Caucasian woman, assume that you have a low bone density. Yeah. Uh, you can uh, 
get these scans done. Your doctor will pester you to take Fosamax or some other drug. But uh, if you don't want to get into that, just you know, assume, especially if you're a petite woman, but even if you're an obese person not doing much exercise, assume that your bone density is on the lowest side and you ought to be doing something to keep them strong. And we'll talk about that. Uh, I don't know if we need to uh, uh, go into the finer points of uh, DEXA scan readouts, but um, most people, two-thirds of people, fall into the uh, standard deviation here. Um, but as bone is lost normally, uh, as we age, um, you may move into the osteopenia, it means it's got lower bone density. This is not a disease, and it shouldn't be a three-alarm fire to go get on Fosamax. Well, every one of us moves into this space a bit as we get older. Not necessarily a disaster. It's not a disease thinning the bone is normal, for women especially. It's never meant to suggest treatment. And most women with osteoporosis, with osteopenia, never fracture bone. And that's really the bottom line. If, if you never fracture a bone, who cares if your bone density is a little on the low side? It really doesn't really matter here. Um, so, uh, again, this isn't a, a case that you got to run out and start on uh, these biphosphonate drugs uh, just because you're in the osteopenia range. It means start working like we're going to be showing you to get your bones stronger. Uh, now, these drugs like Fosamax or fluoride can make the bones look denser on on scan, which is what the uh, which what the bone dense what the DEXA scan measures, but bone density does not equal bone strength, and the and it can be a bit of a physiologic parlor trick to to be on these drugs. The bone looks denser, but it's structurally not healthy normal bone, and when people can fall, and then the bone can still fracture even though the density looked good. So I, uh, I'm not in a, uh, I don't put huge amounts of weight on the, uh, on the DEXA score. Uh, if, I just take it as a general validation that the woman or man needs to, uh, uh, to do what's needed to get that bone stronger. And uh, Dr. Pierce and I will be showing you how to get your bone stronger. But again, if you are a sedentary male or petite female, assume your bone density is lowish and you would benefit from some bone building activity. Uh, uh, now, more than bone density, we scare women, especially guys with their you have low bone density on your DEXA scan. Um, but um, whether that bone actually fractures depends largely on how fit the woman is, how muscular she is. Uh, most women, if, they're, if they've got good muscular development, they may trip and fall, but they bounce, they bruise, but they don't fracture. And so keeping your muscle strength is key to falling without a fracture. Here's the real risk factors in osteoporosis, letting yourself get frail, letting your muscles fade away. Uh, which can happen just as we get older, but it shouldn't. You, even if you're 99, uh, you should be able to get out of a chair, take a nice brisk walk, and that will keep your bones uh, significantly stronger. Um, low body weight, again, petite white females are at risk. If your diet is, uh, and a lot of the nursing home folks uh, are deficient in vitamin D, vitamin K. If your parents fractured hip, that puts you at higher risk. Um, if you're on steroids or thyroid, that can put you at risk. Again, if you're not moving, if you can't arise from a chair, you're at high risk for fracturing. And certainly if you're a smoker, if you've got poor health in general, you have a cancer or some other condition that will put you at high risk. Um, and if you're, if you're, again, your uh, bones were of low density to begin with. One thing you can do, um, if you've got a frail elderly person at home at risk of falling, uh, off the internet, you can get buy a pair of hip pads. And so if they do fall, they won't fracture. And so they're inexpensive and can be really life-saving. So consider uh, protecting uh, elderly frail folks with some hip pads at home. So uh, important strategies, um, don't fall, <laughs> that's the ultimate strategy. Uh, fall, fall proof your home, uh, look around for things that you might trip over, electrical cords, slippery rugs, consider some hip pads, and see if you can improve your balance and your strength. Tai Chi is wonderful. Um, uh, there's all sorts of uh, uh, disciplines that you can use that will improve your muscular strength and your muscular balance. <laughs> um, just as exercise improves muscle strength, it also strengthens bones. Dr. Uh, uh, Pierce and I will give you some examples of that. 
But anything that you got to stress those bones, swimming won't do it. It'll keep your heart strong, your, your joints supple. I'm a big fan of swimming, but it doesn't stress your bones. And so it won't really help with bone um, uh, 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 building, including my, my beloved bicycling. Going out for a 20-mile bike ride really won't strengthen your bones a lot, maybe your femurs a little bit. But getting in the garden down on your knees and lifting buckets of soil and using tools sure will. Taking a hike with a backpack sure will. Some of these wonderful yoga postures will. Using uh, uh, dance moves, etc. And again, avoid falling by keeping your balance uh, as, uh, uh, as trim as possible. Okay. Um, use it or lose it. Uh, take your bones for a walk. Um, so, recipe for strong bones. For a half hour a day, at least do something. Take a walk out in the sunshine, get some vitamin D. Never miss a chance to walk upstairs. Never miss a chance to carry packages. Park at the far end of the parking lot. Take the long way home. Use your bones. You're, they don't care that you're, uh, that you're a computer operator. They just want to know, do you love them and are you using them? Now, here's a, a, a modality that I think is very useful. Uh, off the internet, uh, you can buy a weighted vest, and it's got pockets in it, uh, that, and it comes with, uh, with little packets of lead shot. So when you, get, when you order one, and they're not expensive on the internet, uh, put the vest on empty, no, no weight in it, put a shirt on it, nobody needs to know you're wearing it, and just wear it around for a day or two or three. Just get used to the feel of it. Then when you're ready, put in just two pounds into the, uh, into, the, uh, into the pockets here and go for a 20, 30-minute walk. And you do that every other day for a couple of weeks till you get comfortable with that and then pop in another two pounds. Now you're up to four pounds. And take a nice 30, 40-minute walk um, every other day for a couple of weeks with four pounds. And then when you feel comfortable, bump it up to six pounds. And that's about as far as high as you need to go, eight pounds at the most. Um, do not take the vest out of the box, put in 30 pounds of weight, and go for a walk. You'll never put the vest on again. Gradually increase the weight uh, as you feel more and more comfortable. Just wear the thing. Well, vacuum the house. Go to the post office. Just wear it. And every step you take, a little wow of weight goes down your spine, down your hips, down your femurs, uh, and, uh, and get your bones stronger. And if you really want a Cadillac workout, um, take put on your vest and, and grab a couple little like three pound hand weights and go for a forty minute walk with a vest and a couple of hand weights. I guarantee you, uh, in six months of doing that, your DEXA scan is going to look much better because your bones will be actually stronger. But anything that stresses the bones will work, as Dr. Pierce will tell you. Elastic bands, a good workout at the gym, the, the light hand weights. Use your bones. Get your muscles strong. The bones will get stronger as well. Um, and um, these elastic bands are cheap, and they work very well. Uh, there's some wonderful yoga moves. There's yoga for osteoporosis. I saw that book by Dr. Fishman. Um, use your bones, and uh, they will obey and get stronger. Um, and uh, the weights and the resistance together are a nice combination. And coming down the stretch here. So uh, daily weight-bearing exercises, 30 to 60 minutes. A diet rich in fruits and vegetables. You need those vitamins. You need those minerals. Um, well, a little beach ball. Um, there we go. Um, there's an inflammatory component to osteoporosis. All the more reason to flood those bones with green and yellow vegetables and colorful fruits because those are full of antioxidants that quench the free radicals and, and quench the inflammation. <clears throat> so take a daily walk or a workout to, to stress the bones, lots of fruits and vegetables, avoid those calcium thieves, and your bones should stay strong. Vitamin D is essential to, uh, uh, to help you absorb calcium. Um, have your vitamin D level checked. You want it between 40 and 70 nanograms per ml. If it's well below that, then get a liquid or a, 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 any other type of vitamin D and uh, put a couple drops on your tongue, sorry, to, um, uh, to uh, make sure that uh, you're getting at least 2,000, but some people may need three to 4,000 units of vitamin D a day. Uh, and have this rechecked in four to six months, make sure that uh, it's getting in doing what it's supposed to do. Vitamin K2 stirs the calcium to your bones. 
um, instead instead of your arteries. So uh, eat lots of dark leafy greens for that. Um, the the general dogma still is drink milk for for calcium for your bones, but. It's, it's an old wives' tale. When they really look at the folks who consume the milk, um, it showed no increased uh, protection from osteoporosis. Um, it's not a milk deficiency. It's not a calcium deficiency. It's disuse atrophy of the bone and calcium thieves. Drinking the milk of a cow is not going to magically make your bones stronger. And uh, in fact, countries where they consume the most calcium have the highest rate of fractures uh, for a number of reasons, but it just shows that uh, consuming uh, milk and calcium pills are not uh, the answer. Uh, and um, not only are calcium supplements not the answer, but it's turning out that uh, if you take too much calcium, uh, and in America, or you need 1,000 milligrams, 1,200, that's too much calcium. And the folks who take these high-dose calcium tablets die earlier. They, they calcify their arteries, and calcium in the blood it makes the blood more likely to clot. And uh, the folks who take high-dose calcium tablets actually die sooner from blood clots and heart attacks. It, it, it's, uh, calcium deficiency is not the problem, and calcium tablets are not the answer. Uh, how much do you really need? About 500 milligrams of calcium a day. You don't need 1,000 or 1,200 like we do in America here. Um, I think there's a reasonable number. You get at least three to 400 milligrams of calcium out of green vegetables and fruit. If you are going to take a, a multivitamin or mineral that has calcium, uh, 200 milligrams at the most. And as I said, the 300 from your food will bring you up to the 500 milligrams. That's really all I think anyone needs. Um, dark green leafy vegetables are excellent calcium sources, even better absorbed than cow's milk. Uh, I'm not a big fan of, uh, of these drugs, um, the phosph biphosphonates, etc. What they do is just poison the osteoclast. They think they're giving the osteoblast. They poison the osteoclast. They think they're giving the osteoblast a head start, and the bones get denser. But the problem, they, uh, they get denser on the scan, but the problem is that the cracks that the osteoclasts were supposed to dissolve are still there, and the bone is not getting any stronger. It's like plastering over old rotten timbers in an old house. It looks better, but the, but the structural buttresses are, are not any stronger. And that's my problem with these bone, uh, uh, these bone drugs that just paralyze or kill off the osteoclast. Um, as I said, it looks better on the scans, but it's not really a stronger kind of bone here. <clears throat> um, so uh, they inhibit and they cause the death of osteoclast there. Uh, I think it's a bit of a physiologic parlor trick. That's not, it doesn't get to the root of the problem, which is using your bones to make them stronger and not hurting them. Uh, we can spend a lot of time on this, but no, no real need to get the point. Um, now, there are a couple of folks who could use the, uh, the, these drugs. Uh, uh, if you have a very elderly person, and she's collapsed all the vertebrae in her, uh, in her spine and fractured her hip. She might, in her remaining year or two, uh, benefit from a course of this. And if, if you have a poor woman whose skeleton is shot through with metastatic breast cancer, she might benefit from, from, uh, from the biphosphonates. But these are rare uh, exceptions. Most people with low bone density should get their bones stronger, not lie on these drugs. Uh, um, the bioidentical estrogen, progesterone can make your bones stronger, but they also increase the risk for, for strokes and breast cancers. Um, if someone is already on them for other reasons, their bones will benefit. But I wouldn't put anybody on these uh, hormones just to increase bone density. You get them on a bone strengthening program. So at the end, um, it's not necessarily, it's not a uh, primarily a calcium deficiency. Use your bones to get them stronger. Stop the calcium thieves. The key to preventing and reversing osteoporosis, nourish your bone with good nutrition, don't abuse them, and use them daily to make them stronger. It can be reversed. No matter what your age, the osteoblasts are still in your bones. They're just waiting for you to ask them to do something, to lay down new bones. So, uh, so stay in touch with your osteoblasts. Take them for a good workout every day. Uh, smile a lot, and your bones will last you a lifetime.
So hopefully that's uh, clarified some what's happening in the bones there. Uh, doctors, you will uh, show you a brief clip I made that I uh, that uh, I use for my uh, my workout. I had back surgery. I have spinal fusion, so I can't do any running. But uh, but I'll show you what, how I modify my bike workout to help my muscles and bones. Okay. Oh, here's I'll, uh, play that. I'll play that clip right now. So the three main components of fitness that we all want to pay attention to are one, cardiovascular endurance, so you can go long distances. Second is muscular strength all over the body, leg muscles, arm muscles, etc. And the third is flexibility of your spine, especially. Uh, so uh, being married to a yoga teacher reminds me to do some yoga every other morning and uh, especially do my cat rolls and uh, keep my spine limber. Those mornings when I'm not doing yoga, uh, I pay deference to the cardiovascular and muscular strength activity. Now, I've had back surgery, and so my running days are over. It doesn't feel good for me to, uh, uh, to run. I've lost some of the rotary motion you need when you run. But I've always been an avid cyclist, and so I've uh, relied on the bicycle mechanism for my cardiovascular workouts. Uh, so I've got a inexpensive uh, st stationary bike that is recumbent, uh, so I can sit up on it as opposed to being hunched forward on it. Uh, and I turn the uh, just a couple hundred bucks off Amazon, uh, and I turn it up to the resistance to the maximum, uh, and then I start pedaling. And I like to keep it uh, velocity around 14, 15 miles an hour. Uh, but then, and this will certainly, 40 minutes of this will certainly get my heart rate up, uh, but to work my muscles and keep my bones strong, uh, I have a couple of 10-pound hand weights here, and so while I'm pedaling, um, I will give myself an upper body workout. I will keep the uh, <clears throat> palms up uh, with the weights uh, to exercise my forearms and biceps. And then I'll hold it uh, palms down for another minute or two. And uh, uh, that will get my forearm extensors. I'll hold it out as long as I can, isometrically. <clears throat> I'll, I'll cross in front of me, <clears throat> up on top, <clears throat> crossing over the top. And I just hold it as long as I can. I'm just demonstrating different movements right now. Uh, and then just come back and, and run. Uh, so, uh, 40 minutes of this is a good workout. It's uh, clearly, and I can, you do a little side bending, um, for my axial muscles there. And it's a good workout, uh, that hopefully will keep my bones strong as well as my muscles. I do have a couple of questions, um, uh, just as a follow up, uh, Dr. Clapper is, um, with the amount of non-dairy um, alternatives like coconut and soy, almond, different types of you know nut milks and things like that, have you found anything in your clinical experience or um, anything in the research thus far? Because it is a relatively new uh, type of uh, you know uh, product, right, on the market um, that it actually works um, just as good as milk, or would you say you know not as necessary? Let's just stick with the fruits and vegetables. Uh, as, you're talking about as a calcium source or as Yeah, the non-dairy, uh, yeah, as a calcium source, correct. Yeah, like right. the soy um, the, yeah. I have no reason to think that the uh, the, the soy and the uh, oat milk, um, I think there's the ones I saw they have the added calcium. Uh, I have no reason to think that that calcium wouldn't be absorbed. Uh, but again, the calcium is really in the greens and the fruits, et cetera. I wouldn't rely on those. Uh, but... Um, Again, I've had no problem with calcium fortified orange juice. I should have no problem with calcified soy milk or uh, or oat milk. So I think they've, they've got a legitimate uh, legitimate place in, in the diet. Coconut milk, I'm not such a big fan of for all the saturated fat, but uh, the soy and the um, and the oat milk, I think, would be legitimate. Okay, great, great. And um, in terms of the DEXA scan, it sounds like, you know, you're saying that, you know, don't put too much stock into it, still screen, but don't too, you know, put too much stock um, into it. Is that is that pretty much what you're saying? 
Yes, I have women who come to me just distraught that uh, that their bone density is uh, they're, they're osteopenic, and I'm going to start on Fosmax. I don't want to break the bone, uh, and that's uh, all they focus on. It, it dominates their lives. It takes over their lives, and uh, and it's a it, there can be variation between one scanner and another, between one technician uh, and another. Uh, your your the, your the exact angle that you're laying on the table. There's so many things that can put a significant variation from one reading to another that it, that it's, it's not worth uh, uh, ruminating over the the actual numbers. If you're clearly on the lower side, that's all you need to know, and you you should start getting busy with your exercise and your healthy diet. Um, but uh, to, uh, to, oh, my last one went up this much or went down that much, and that becomes the, the focus of their lives. Now, in general, if you're lowish, then you know, you know your bones need some love. Uh, give it to them, and don't worry. Don't fixate on the actual numbers. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you so, so much. Um, we're going to switch gears and uh, talk to Dr. Pierce. Uh, thank you so much for being patient with us. And Dr. Pierce, thank you for you know joining uh, on the show again. And uh, my question to you is, you know, what are the most common you know mis- misconceptions that you would get about you know osteoporosis? Dr. Clapper gave a wonderful presentation, but you know, have you had anything that would come up time in and time out, you know, again uh, regarding you know bone health and uh, osteoporosis? Sure. Uh, Great question, Colin. And uh, Dr. Clapper uh, did an excellent job in his presentation and he introduced these and um, uh, some are worth repeating uh, again and again because they're so pervasive. And I think um, I think a big one is just how uh, well the dairy industry had done uh, with their marketing campaign that milk does the body good and you need milk and cheese and butter to make strong bones. And um, if you flash, you know, a picture on this on the screen uh, of of a tall glass of milk um, and you ask, you know, uh, anyone walking by, well, what is this rich in and what's it good for? People say it's oh, it's oh, look at all that great calcium and how much stronger my bones are going to get. And um, I think it is just so key to remind ourselves that bone structure and healthy bones are very, very complex. And there is no magic bullet that um, you can drink one thing or eat one thing and expect all the other parts of your life to not um, be important because don't worry, I've had my two glasses of milk today. And so, so I think part of that is the idea that, oh, you know, I'll uh, eat cheeseburgers and fries and coke and stay inside all day and um but i took my you know uh i had my milk and i had my 1500 milligram supplement of of calcium today i'm good and that's so risky because it puts a false hope in um something uh that will that has the promise of fixing all of our other bad habits and um and what what's i think more important than that is that when you look at studies involving tens of thousands of people comparing uh, those people who drink a, or who consume a lot of dairy compared to those who consume a little dairy, they don't have any better um, chance of avoiding a fracture. They don't have less osteoporosis. Uh, and when you look at the country-based studies that Dr. Clapper mentioned, the, the countries that have the highest consumption of dairy um, have the highest fracture risk. The countries that have the lowest consumption of dairy uh, tend to have lower fracture risks. And it's not, you know, these are, it, uh, as Dr. Clapper has done such a great job of pointing out how complex the issue is, well, surely it's more than just the amount of dairy consumed in equatorial Africa compared to the, to the amount of dairy consumed in Norway. But um, it, uh, in sun and amount of exercise. And, and if you're staying indoors because it's minus 20 or if you're outside working the fields, um, you know, it's many variables, but certainly calcium is not a fix all. Dairy is not a fix all. Um, and especially with like the calcium supplements and the risk for heart, uh, heart attacks um, that uh, Dr. K already mentioned um, and the other associated, uh, associated risks, particularly of high fat um, uh, dairy products um, to our health in general, 
Um, uh, we just need to focus on getting calcium from from plants, from uh, beans and uh, greens and um, uh, foods like that, nuts and seeds, dried fruits, et cetera. Um, uh, I'd like to, my, I, I guess the last sort of misconception I'd focus on before I talk a little bit more about exercise and, and uh, what I did today to make my bones stronger um, was um, that osteoporosis is a uh, disease of the elderly and should be only addressed um, when you're seeing your provider, uh, you know, after age 60. Um, osteoporosis is really a pediatrics disease in the sense that the bone that we put down when we're in our adolescence and in our teens is what's going to help determine how big our and, and healthy our bones are at our peak bone, peak bone mass, which is in our 30s, early to mid 30s. And kind of no matter what we do, we're going to lose a little bit of bone mass um, and a little bit of bone quality um, from then on until uh, our old age and when we die. And so um, if we uh, have, you know, are drinking 12 sodas a day and, and, you know, eating the high salt foods and smoking and drinking alcohol uh, all day long and not exercise, not getting the vitamin D and eating the whole foods, and then you say, okay, doc, I'm 65. Now it's time for me to focus on my bones. The, you, the boat is sailed. The uh, horse is out of the uh, barn and whatever other phrase we can think of that we need to be talking about this. If you're watching this today, you should be having this discussion with your um, children and grandchildren um, to have the most impact. Yeah. Um, I would like to move on just to a little bit about exercise uh, because uh, that is uh, what we are focusing on as the mainstay with uh, uh, exercise and um, using our bones so we don't lose our bones. Um, uh, Colin, do you have a couple clips that, uh, of me uh, working out in the garden today? Uh, yes, sir. Um, I will play that right now, so stay tuned. All right, we're going to take out the compost and work on our bones at the same time. It's a pretty day in California, lots of sun, vitamin D, good for the bone. All right. Stay close, Lily. Okay. All right, so this is, these are the compost plants. Banana peels, you know, all that stuff. <clears throat> some earthworms in there, but you gotta turn your compost and shake it up. So might as well get a workout at the same time. All right, here we go. Then when the compost is finished, you can take it out in these big buckets. They're pretty heavy. Okay. All right. Weeding, bending over, stretching, balance exercises, all part of gardening. Last but not least, always try to get some squats in. Thirty-five. Okay. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. So, so, uh, Dr. Pierce, really quickly for our audio listeners, um, you know, what did you do through, uh, through that when you were incorporating into that, you know, lifestyle? Sure. So when I think of, uh, what we can do to keep our bones healthy, I often think about, uh, you know, how well it relates to being out in the garden. So you're outside, you're under the sun, getting lots of vitamin D, uh, you are surrounded by healthy fruits and vegetables that you can, you know, 
break off or uh, uh, pull off from the limb and uh, munch on that. And then all of the stretching and reaching and squatting uh, that uh, we do throughout the the hour or two that we spend in the garden, and what I was uh, what I've demonstrated was um, uh, manually uh, turning compost, um, reaching for weeds, uh, hauling heavy compost buckets uh, around, and how you know really. Uh, when we think about exercising, we think about getting into our exercise outfit and going to the gym. That's only going to be a certain amount of time, a small amount of time of our day. But if we can build um, our bones throughout all the hours that we're walking around, building it into our day, as it's, you know, without thinking about it, that's how we get long term gains. So it's taking the stairs, um, uh, getting up from our computers as often as possible. Um, uh, parking far away from the entrance, uh, et cetera, and all these things uh, add up. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And uh, and then how I counsel my patients is, you know, similar as well. Is where, um, you know, if they're sitting for pro- prolonged hours, you know, the two of you guys have uh, mentioned that you know we just sit for long periods of time, and that you know, kind of, it's kind of, you know, they say that it's a new, you know, new type of smoking where we're creating, you know, more of this like underlying bed of chronic inflammation i tell people you know what just put a phone reminder on the hour every hour you spend just two minutes you know just getting up out of your chairs moving around do some air squats you know do some wall stretching um just to you know continue to keep the you know blood uh, moving and uh with that continual body resistance um you know it's important as well and like you said building that into a lifestyle um, you know, goes far beyond, you know, um, than just incorporating, of course, we live in a modern society, we have to schedule everything, you know, into our schedules. But if we can build it into a lifestyle, like you demonstrated, Dr. Pust, um, that would be awesome. So, um, gentlemen, I can't uh, thank you guys enough. Um, you know, to conclude, I wanted to ask you both, um, you know, where do people uh, find you guys? How do they reach out to you? And, uh, you know, what can they expect from a lifestyle medicine consultation? Um, Dr. Uh, Pierce, I'll go with you. And then Dr. Clapper. Uh, sure. Uh, I, you know, I have a little bit of a, a presence on Instagram, either through the plant-based telehealth uh, handle or at Dr. Jeff Pierce. Um, and uh, I work uh, seeing uh, uh, video consults um, in Texas, California, and Florida. Uh, through the great plant-based telehealth platform that we all work with. I'm happy to see you, chat with you about in in either 30 or 60 minute visits, um, how uh, you can maximize your own health and hopefully get off some medications and uh, make yourself uh, uh, feel happy, get around uh, with fewer aches and pains and and smile like Dr. K just said. All right. Then Dr. K? Uh, you can find me at my website, drclapper.com. It's all spelled out, D-O-C-T-O-R-K-L-A-P-E-R.com. Uh, you'll uh, find links uh, to videos and all sorts of information. If you'd like to do an actual uh, consult with me, uh, go to, as Dr. Pierce said, plantbasedtelehealth.com. I have medical licenses and can see patients in California, Hawaii, Florida, and New York. And so if you live in those states, um, make uh, an appointment and we'll talk about whatever uh, is of concern. We'll certainly go over your diet and your lifestyle, uh, but uh, get into any other areas that you feel you could use uh, uh, an experienced eye to give you some reflections. So uh, I'll see you on the website and visit my YouTube channel, uh, Dr. Clapper. And I I post Q&As there three times a week. And uh, you can ask your question. You can get them answered there. So plenty of places to find me on the internet. Thanks for that. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for taking the time out um, out of your busy schedules of seeing patients and just living a healthy lifestyle and just for being, you know, great role models. You know, um, I think um, doctors, you know, don't deserve an, you know enough credit. And I really appreciate you guys showing up. Um, and it's just doing the work and being such great role models to our community, whether it's in our local community or, you know, um, to a broader sense. So thank you so much. Thank you, Colin. Great show. Thank you very much. Yeah. Pleasure to be here. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for watching this episode. If you like this, please like, uh, comment and subscribe. And if you feel like this was a benefit for someone else, please let them know as well. And until then, please say goodbye to Dr. Clapper and to Dr. Pierce. <laughs> Bye-bye. Be well. 
Hey guys, thank you so much for watching that episode. We hope that you enjoyed it. If you like this, please like, follow, and subscribe. And please follow us for the latest updates for this season, season five. And if you feel that this was a benefit for someone else, please let them know. And please follow us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify Podcasts, and YouTube. And thank you so much again. And we will see you on the next one.